Hey guys, Yule here. So today is a garden tour of our front yard. And right now it's all about the daffodils. And the reason why I picked all these daffodils to bloom right now is because last year when I was observing my garden, I realized there was not a lot of things blooming. And daffodils was my go-to flower because um, they are just a wonderful perennial bulb and a perennial means that they come back year after year, multiply and produce more flowers. And they're also deer resistant. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I battle deer right here in front of our house, not as much in the back. But um, deer do not bother these plants and neither do rodents or squirrels or chipmunks and uh, rabbits. So I know we're all dealing with all sorts of critters in our backyards, but daffodils are great for that because they're not bothered by them. And they multiply and they produce so many flowers year after year. And you plant them once and pretty much you can forget about them. And I will talk about their care a little bit later in this video but um, they're really not that fussy. And believe it or not, um, there are thousands of different varieties of daffodils. In fact, a couple of months ago, I watched one of the webinars by a daffodil breeder in United Kingdom. And I believe he mentioned there was 13,000 of different distinct varieties of daffodils. They come in all sorts of heights, all sorts of uh, colors uh, and all sorts of shapes. And I will go through um, individual varieties that I have here blooming right now. They're an incredible choice for this time spring interest. Now this is what 900 daffodils looks like. There are about 500 daffodils right here in this bed and uh, 400 right there next to the house, 200 on each side. And um, this bed right here that I'm standing next to is actually no dig, no till bed, which um, basically means that I didn't have to rototill the grass or anything like that. I just covered the grass with newspaper and packing paper. And then I put thick layer of compost on, it, on top of that and then thick layer of mulch on top of that. Now I wanted to talk about the care of daffodils real quick. Um, generally they're very easy to take care of plants but there are a couple of things that they will not tolerate. Um, number one is poor drainage. So make sure that you have a well-draining soil. If you have clay or something like that adding compost or adding grit may help with your drainage. Um, another thing, they do need a minimum of five hours of sunlight to make sure that these um, leaves get enough energy and um, carbohydrate storage and send it back to the bulb for more blooms. And other than that, they're really easy. Sometimes after uh, five or seven years of growing in the same spot, they can become congested. So you're going to have to divide them, which is not a big deal. I divide mine after they're done blooming and their foliage yellowed. All right, so I'm going to talk about the individual varieties of daffodils. And the first one is this one, it's uh, called Thalia. And it is a pure white daffodil and it also has multiple flowers per stem. It is a little bit of a shorter daffodil absolutely adorable flower. Um, you can combine it with a shorter perennials. The next daffodil that I have here is uh, Pink Charm. And right now the Corona, which is the part of the flower in the middle, that's what it's called, Corona, and these are called the petals. The Corona is a little bit more of an orange pink. And uh, as the flower fades, it actually turns more and more pink. These daffodils last for a very long time. Last year, I had them last almost a month. There's some more Thalia right there. And I do have smoke bush that is starting to leaf out here. 
and look at this isn't this so beautiful um another daffodil that i have here is white lion and white lion is a double daffodil and these petals in between are yellow right now but they will fade to white as the flower ages so these are going to be completely white daffodil i'm just loving how the smoke bush looks against all the white of the daffodils that was not planned So the next daffodil that I have here is um, the one I discovered last year and it is British Gamble and it has one of the biggest coronas. Look at that. So the flower is very large and it's quite heavy. So the breeders actually bred the stem to be a little bit shorter than a normal daffodil because if you have a longer stem, a large head, um, it will fall during the rain or wind but if you have a shorter stem the flowers stay upright and we actually had a lot of rain last week and they did just fine um, they have this beautiful creamy color corona on them actually um, also great cut flower i've had it in the vase for about six days now there are some uh, muscari latifolium in between the daffodils oh, this these are all of the white lions here I actually mixed them up uh, with the British gamble and just wanted to show you how beautiful that caramel euchre looks with the British gamble corona sort of echoes that color and caramel euchre is one of the best and healthiest euchres out there. Another daffodil that I have here is this pink champagne, which sort of looks like white lion, but it has this beautiful color. Look at this. Now, another perennial that I have here blooming and it's one of the few that blooms this time of the year is Dicentra. And this is the one that I divided last fall. I made a video about it. And if you are in colder climates, right now is a good time to divide your Dicentra. So these are the divisions from last fall. Look how healthy they look, they bloomed. There's another one right there. I'm actually going to get more, I think. In the beds next to the house, the idea was to combine British Gamble with Sir Winston Churchill Daffodil, which is this one right here. It's a small daff uh, double daffodil. It has multiple flowers on the stem. However, I um, in the mix, somehow I got all different types of other daffodils too, which I don't mind. These are just adorable but they were also some of the yellow ones which is the classic daffodil that's what you think about when you think about a daffodil is <laughs> the one right there but there were also some yellow ones uh very very light yellow and um i found out that these are yellow cheerfulness very interesting and all of these beds are actually underplanted with violas, which I planted about three weeks ago. And they were just absolutely beautiful while I was waiting for the daffodils to bloom. Uh, we had a couple of frosty nights. They withstood incredibly well. And we have um, frost coming tonight, actually. And I think they're definitely going to be okay. I'm. Um, hoping the daffodils are going to be okay too and in these two containers right here i have some violas there is another imposter daffodils right here but it's not too bad out of 900 daffodils that i ordered 
there are only few mislabeled ones. Quick word about the gold mob cypresses. Uh, these are the plants that my parents planted when they were visiting a while ago, and I just do not have the heart to remove them. But they are getting bigger every year, so I decided to prune them a little bit. They look a little bit shaggy right now and not very neat, but I think they will fill in in no time. I will definitely keep you on updated on this uh, little project. I wanted to quickly show you the tulips that I forced for the front of the house. I have to be honest with you guys, it wasn't 100% successful, I think because of our really, really cold winter. But I basically planted some tulips in pots and I kept them next to the house with some frost blanket on top of it. And look at that. I think it looks beautiful. Some of them, some of the bulbs did not do well and my question is, is it because of the weather or is it because of the quality of the bulbs? Uh, quality of the bulbs definitely matter. Um, but uh, let me just quickly show you the varieties. So this is Exotic Emperor and it's absolutely stunning. I'm definitely having it in the garden next year. Uh, the single one right here is a Johann Strauss. And this right here is Sunny Prince, the yellow one. And this one is Mondial. And I have a lot of this tulip in the border, but I am a little bit of, um, disappointed how floppy they are. The flower is absolutely stunning, but super floppy. I prefer the Exotic Emperor because it almost has the same look. These are more uh, pure white. The Exotic Emperor has a green stripe to it. Um, quickly about the perennials, because I sort of like the whole composition. Uh, it's very simple, it's very peaceful. I have very few colors in here, only white and yellow and green. Green is a color too. So um, the Evergreens right there are soft touch hollies and I always like to have some evergreens in my pots because they're there all the time. They create structure and then the feathery looking perennials are sweet woodruff and then I have some lamb's ear right here and I have a sedum that uh, has yellow margins that pick up a little bit of the yellow of the tulip. So these principles right here you can apply to your garden when you design um, area of your garden. For example, you can include evergreen interests like the soft touch holly and then you can include some of the perennials that uh, provide a texture like the sweet woodruff or the lamb's ear. And then you can have your seasonal plants like the tulips or other perennials, but in um, very peaceful and elegant colors that don't clash. And once you're a little bit more experienced, you can go into more of the contrast of the colors rather than the um, you know, analogous colors like these. And I also quickly wanted to show you the greenhouse. I have some dahlias there already and um, they're open right now, but I closed that little greenhouse at night for protection. It's been a life changing thing because I can get the dahlias that I'm starting um, in pots out of the house and they can grow healthy and happy and wait until I can plant them outside in the garden. I wanted to talk about design ideas for the daffodils. So these are plants that fill in the gap between the really early blooming bulbs to the early summer blooming perennials. So you could definitely use them in mass in your beds and interplant them in between your perennials. So in this case, in this bed, 
What we have is tons of hostas. This is Michael's hosta garden. And hostas come in late in my zone, zone six, nor northern New Jersey. So this bed would have been empty if I didn't have the daffodils here right now. But I feel, I, I really love the look of this right now, planting them in mass like this. But I feel I needed some other plant so next year I will have tons of Virginia bluebells here interplanted between the daffodils. Now Virginia bluebells are uh, American native ephemeral and they only bloom um, this time of the year and then they disappear. And by the time they disappear and the daffodils disappear, the hosta foliage will show up and cover all this um, decaying and yellowing foliage. So definitely plan out what your companions for your daffodils will be. All right, guys, this is it for today. I hope you enjoy this garden tour and learn something new. Um, there will be more videos to come. As you probably noticed, I had to take a little break because this is the, uh, the busiest time for me professionally, but there are definitely more videos to come as the garden starts to wake up more. And um, I will talk more about the garden care and all the different flowers, uh, perennials and shrubs and trees blooming in the garden. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.